So... It happened! The moment Project L would move into its next stage is here. Which means we'll start hearing about this game a lot more now. But also, for marketing's purposes, it means that the game also had to get its official name. A name which has been debated around the internet a lot. And that's because, throughout the entire teasing of Project L, people like to try and predict what the official name would be. And so, before we move on, let's have a look at the big reveal. The reveal that Project L is no more, and instead, hail to the new king of fighting games called... Alright, tell me right now, how many of you managed to predict that one? See, among the predictions, people thought the official name would be one of two outcomes. Either it would be two generic names where one would be referencing League and the other one would be referencing fighting in general. Like Rune Terra Rumble, Bot Lane Fighting, Rift Blitz, Clash of Legends. But those would be too generic and they could be confused with League of Legends. Not to mention that some of them sound like mobile games. So the other theory was that this game would have a whole new catchy word of its own. So just like Valorant got a... Uh, Valorant? Perhaps Project L would be something like Challengers, Rising, Radiant. I'm only using the last one because it was teased to be a codename before. Yeah, apparently some of the internal names were Evo, Radiant or Rising Thunder. But alas, if there is one thing no one was able to predict, it's that. And therein lies the problem. You see, if the first thing you think of is... How do I pronounce that? You may have a problem. But thankfully, about an hour after mass confusion around the internet, Riot's official channels clarified how to pronounce it. 2XKO. Yeah, it's kind of funny that Riot had to officially come out to confirm how to pronounce the name of their big game. Regardless, just to clarify, the new game we are gonna be talking about now is 2XKO. A name which the internet did not react to so positively. I liked Project L better, not gonna lie. Definitely not the name I expected. Bold move not to include any LOL branding in the title. All the hype for an Elon Musk baby name, LOL. And there are more comments like these, which I would have to censor. Now, is this justified? Well, as you'll see, there is a lot more to this name than you might think. And we'll dive into that in just a second. But first, we have to tackle another interesting question. What do you think people will call this game? And I don't mean the pronunciation, I mean in a casual conversation, what will people call it? League of Legends is simply called League. Legends of Runeterra is either called Lore or Runeterra. League of Legends Wild Rift is Wild Rift. Teamfight Tactics is TFT. And I am pretty sure no one actually shortens Valorant to Val. So this begs the question, what will 2XKO be? The way it's written, it splits the name into two words. 2XKO. It is really hard to pronounce it as a single word, which means sooner or later people will shorten it. So what will it be? 2X? KO? Right fighting game? Or will people continue calling it Project L? I'm curious to see what's gonna happen there. Now, as I mentioned, contrary to what people may believe, this name is not just a jumble of letters that was put together to look cool. There is some meaning and, more importantly, a reason for the name being what it is. To start off, we actually got a comment from Tom Cannon, who is pretty much the head of this entire project. Naming is hard. I actually didn't really dig the names of our past projects at first. Evo, Radiant, Rising Thunder. But they grew on me over time. The team worked really hard to land on 2XKO and loved it right away. Glad so many of you do too. Yeah. The community is pretty split on the last statement. But again, this one has layers. First of all, the name is kinda clever. You know, 2x for the double team, KO for the fighting reference. It is clever, but it also makes sense why they went for this weird spelling. On one side, it is obvious Riot is trying to separate 2x KO from League as much as possible so that the game doesn't rely on the fame of League and instead it can carry the IP on its own. 
That's why there are no league references in the name. But on top of that, throughout all the harsh comments you might see, you should really remember that your opinion does not matter. Okay, now hear me out. It's not that we are all specks of dust in the ever-expanding cosmos. It's really that our opinions don't matter in this specific scenario. The chances are that we all already know about this game and we have our own excitement. Either you like the idea of a fighting game or you don't. No matter how bad the name of a game is, it is not gonna affect that excitement. And if for you it does, you might have a problem. More than that, it is far more likely that this name is primarily aimed towards the broader audience. The people who see this game somewhere in the market competing with the other fighting games. And truth be told, in this case, 2XKO does stand out. Which is important, because in this market you are competing with Tekken, a name of great importance in the video game history, Mortal Kombat, which perhaps has even deeper roots in gaming, and Street Fighter, which is pretty much synonymous with fighting games. So to compete in this space, you have to go for a unique name, which is something 2XKO does accomplish. And on top of that, all of this quote-unquote drama around the name does play into the marketing, be it intended or not. Think back to the drama around Hogwarts or the drama around PAL World. Yes, both of those are definitely a bit bigger rabbit holes, but the drama surrounding them gave them more visibility. And a very dialed down version of that might be happening here too. So while some people may not be massive fans of the name 2XKO, from the marketing's perspective it is a smart move, even though it is a bit of a gamble. But thankfully, drama around the names is not the only news we got from Project L. Because together with all of this, we also got some really cool updates on the game. So first, let's dive into all the new things we learned, and then we'll break down some of the backgrounds and the implications of League's lore, because uh, remember what kind of channel you are watching. So, all of this came out with a whole separate video where Tom Cannon came forth and gave us more updates. Here he started talking about what all of this means. Simply said, the game progressed far enough where they feel confident with giving us more info on it. Even though the game still has a long way to go. Now throughout last year they stayed connected with the fighting community really well. And ultimately they just want to take these interactions further this year. With the next event they will be attending being Japan's EVO in April. However, Tom confirmed that they won't be focusing only on major events anymore which suggests that some smaller pop-ups may be happening too. Besides that, the devs will also share their plans online with those who can't attend. Which is pretty much the reason why 2XKO got its own name and they got their own official channels. It's all because they really just want to focus on their community first, which means they need channels to talk to people. After which, we got a semi-announcement, which honestly doesn't really surprise me. It was said that there is the possibility that there will be a at-home playtest later this year. Which obviously suggests that there will be some kind of alpha or beta testing. The reason why this does not surprise me is because there is no way there won't be some kind of a beta test tied into Arcane. Especially since they mentioned it would be later this year. Again, from the marketing perspective, it simply makes sense. The game has the bridge, they have Echo, they have Jinx. It would make sense for the beta to be tied to Arcane's release. But immediately after that, we got another big announcement. It's the fact that they plan to release the game on Xbox, PlayStation and PC in 2025. And right now you can go to their official website and register for the testing. The reason why this is interesting is because it's pretty soon. 2025 was always the hope, but most people were still betting on 2026 release. But also what's crazy is that Riot already confirmed that for League specifically 2025 will be big. Apparently, to quote them, 2025 will change League forever. We still don't know what that means, but Project L is joining in. So that year will be big. 
But unfortunately, that's where the news end. However, that is not where the media of 2XKO ends. Because of course, with this, we also got the official announcement of the name, which has a lot of background footage, which shows us a whole new stage. So let's break it all down. First of all, let's talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack is nuts. I wouldn't be surprised if Demon started jumping into frame here. Was Mick Gordon involved? It fits the fighting pace so well. It reminds me of when Valorant came out with similar beats and everyone got immediately hooked. So needless to say, Riot's music department went crazy again and it's awesome. But yes, of course, all of this comes with a new stage, which is in Bilgewater. This bar really reminds me of the Baron's Rest Inn, which was in the Ruined King. I believe it is the same place because of the two floor layout, with the main bar being in the bottom floor, with the drinking tables being above that. It doesn't really mean much, it really could be any bar in Bilgewater and no one would care, but hey, I noticed all of those references. Speaking of which, in the background you can see Bilgewater's iconic town bridge. It should be separate from the Butcher's Bridge, that's a different one. And of course, we also have all the Buru statues around, including above the bar and around the staircase. But what's cool is that even the background characters get some lore. Since it is Bilgewater, we do have some fishy people handling the bar, including a really awesome chef back there. But the main two women at the bar actually belong to Miss Fortune's crew. Not only do they have the red coats to match her own, but one of them also has a gun with Sarah's fortune heart on it. I do not believe this is a teaser for Sarah Fortune to become a playable fighter in the game though, because otherwise Gangplank would also have to join in. Next on the left side we have the drunk crew. There is nothing special to really mention here, I'm not sure if they actually belong to Gangplank. But hey, one of them has an anchor instead of his leg and it's really cool design. Then on the other side we have a barrel hermit crab. Remember that a lot more dangerous versions of these were enemies in the Ruined King. Not to mention they also relate to Legends of Runeterra. There is a shark person enjoying his meal. And there is a yordle playing the piano who gets uh, really creepy during certain frames. And lastly, very far in the background, we can see some wanted posters. Some of these are Bilgewater skins, which are obviously not canon, such as Aatrox and uh, maybe that's Quinn. But also you can see Tom Kench and Gangplank. But that's really it. That is all the easter eggs and all the news we got about Project L, now known as 2XKO. To be fair, all of this is some really exciting news, because now we have more content to talk about. Not to mention I can now go crazy with videos talking about what kind of places I would like to see in this fighting game. And yes, when it comes to the name, we'll have to wait and see how good it's gonna be for the marketing. Because so far, if anything, people are confused. So rest assured that 2XKO is here and now... We can all pray that the sequel will not happen anytime soon. Because 2XKO2 is gonna be a whole another rabbit hole. 